We're going to talk about acids, bases, and then later on salts. And right now we're going to just do a brief introduction of what acids and bases are. You probably already have a conception of what acids are and what bases are. And you probably have studied and related it to pH levels and pH scales. What we're interested in this class is how to define acids, acids and bases. Now, there are three types of definitions and, and, and how people define acids and bases through the ages. What we're interested in is the Bronsted Lowry's definition. And how we define acids are acids are anything that donates a proton, which is the hydrogen ion. Acids are anything that donates protons and bases are anything that accepts protons, all right? Now, um, you may not really appreciate this definition right now, but later on, I'll go and describe what they are by giving examples of uh, equations. All right, so what are acids? Well, we know what acids are and, and probably how it feels and tastes. Well, if you are able to taste safe acids, acids that are edible, right, there are lots of it, uh, they usually taste a little sourish to maybe slightly sweetish, sweetish. Um, and, and when you touch it and you have it, rub it against your skin, and it feels sticky. And what's happening is that the sticky, um, right, what's happening is that there's a thin layer of uh, your skin that is being uh, dissolved in acids. Bases, on the other hand, are like medicines. So when you take them, uh, it feels bitter. Uh, and when you use bases, like soaps, it feels slippery. That's what they are. Um, I don't recommend you to try and taste all the acids in the world and all the bases in the world, or just try things in random just to see whether they're acids or bases, because in actual fact, strong acids and strong bases are corrosive, right? That means it can affect you. Now, how are acids and bases defined? Well, you can use a pH scale to um, quantify the relative strength or the relative acidity or the relative or alkalinity of acids and bases. Acidity and alkalinity. Okay, acidity and alkalinity. All right, now, uh, what we're interested in is a few types of indicators to show us the relative strength of the acids and bases. Uh, the scale, as you know, is from the 0 to 14 scale range. So the lower the pH, the more acidic it is, and the higher the pH, the more basic it is. Um, the common indicators that we will use is one of them are I mean, indicators come in two forms. They can come in strips, paper strips, or they can come in solutions. All right? The four types of indicators that we are interested in are the methyl orange. When you have methyl orange, it is red when the substance we're testing is acidic, and it's yellow when the substance we test is basic, and it's orange when it's right there in the middle. Another one is phenolphthalein. It is colorless when it's acidic and pink when it's basic. And then we have the litmus. Litmus usually in the form of paper. It is red when it's acidic and it's blue when it's basic. And then we have the universal indicator. Prior to this, this these three indicators are specific indicators. That means they only change from one color to the other. Universal indicators, however, are a mix of different types of indicators in that one indicator. And the purpose of the universal indicator is to have different colors 
as we go along the pH scale from 0 to 14. So the intensity of it being acidic is really red and it gradually goes to violet when it becomes basic. And the universal indicator is used to kind of give us an appreciation in terms of the rainbow effect. It, that means is that when it goes from red to violet and as it goes on from 0 pH to 14 pH, the color changes according to the colors of the rainbow. All right? That is how we find acids and bases. Now, types of acids. There are basically two main categories of acids. Organic acids, which are usually weak, and mineral acids, which are usually strong. Here's a list of examples of weak, acids, uh, weak organic acids. Ethanoic acid, which is vinegar. Meth methanoic acid, which is the uh, defense chemical substance secreted by ants or bees during battles or defense. Lactic acid, which is the sourness in milk when milk goes sour. Citric acid, which is common in all the fruits that we take, or like lemons and lime. And then we have mineral acids. Here's a list of strong ad mineral acids. We have hydrochloric acid. We know what that is. Nitric acid sulfuric acid and phosphic acid. Now, um, there are a couple of mineral acids, mineral acids which are weak, which is carbonic acid, which is what we have in our Coke and Pepsi, and hydrofluoric acid. We know from, uh, if you watched uh, Breaking Bad, you know that, uh, you get the impression that probably hydrofluoric acid is really, really uh, strong. But in fact, it's quite weak. So yeah, it's the breaking bad. Idea. Okay, let's move on to uh, bases. Basically, bases can be uh, I can be divided as soluble bases and insoluble bases. When you use put bases into water and that base dissolves in water, we can say that that base has suddenly became an alkaline, all right? And here's the list of alkalines. Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide. And then insoluble bases are like magnesium oxide and calcium oxide. All right, now, let's get back to how we define acids and bases according to the bronsted lowrys definition. And what we're going to say is that, for example, uh, when we put hydrochloric acid in water, what happens to it? HCl plus H2O will give us H3. O plus N C L minus. There you go. Let's see if you can see this equation, right? Here, this is defined as a proton donor. So here we go. Proton donor. And what it's doing is that it's giving its H plus to water. Right? It's hydrogen ion to water to make this. A hydronium ion. So this in effect is an example of a Bronsted Lowry acid because this hydrochloric acid is donating its hydrogen ion to water to make hydronium. Okay? Now what about um, Bronsted Lowry's definition of a uh, base? What well, we have ammonia, you put it in water and it will make ammonium 
ion and hydroxide ions. So what is happening here? Here, ammonia is receiving the proton from water, right? So it is accepting protons, accepts proton. So it's a ground state Lowry definition of a proton acceptor, which is a base. So when ammonium receives the hydrogen ion from water, it forms ammonium. All right, so this here is the product of when hydrogen ions is accepted by ammonia, which this is the definition of a Bronsted-Lowry base.